Pico. Yep. It's class week. Bass Master Classic Week. What you thinking? So I used to love, before I was fishing the elites, when I was fishing, you know, local pot tournaments on these small little local lakes around the house, this used to be one of my favorite weeks for kind of an unorthodox reason. What used to happen, the pod tournaments around the house always had the best turnouts right after the Bassmaster Classic. And that just always, in my opinion, I didn't know if it was because it was getting warmer, time changed, people had more time to go fishing, whatever, but it seemed like there was just a lot of hype around this tournament. And there always has been, there always will be. It's the Bassmaster Classic. It's the biggest tournament that there is in competitive bass fishing. And they used to always see a huge spike in the pot tournaments. And it just showed how much interest were going on this week in the sport of bass fishing. Then it would kind of taper off for the rest of the year. But it seems like this time of year, more people are fishing, more people are interested in fishing. And that's just kind of when it goes down. Well, that's, now, that's a positive. Yeah, that's so positive. That means <laughs> yeah, but I, I would. Where you're going with no, that. I would much rather be fishing the classic. I'm saying, but if, you know, if you have, you need to find a positive. Yeah, I got a positive. You know, the thing about it is, I didn't make the classic this year. I'm at home right now. They've already done three days of practice on the lake. Now they got some off days and another practice day, and I'm at home. I'm sitting in my kitchen, spooling up reels, got line all around me because I'm not up there actually fishing in the biggest tournament in the world. And you know, I don't have an excuse. It's all my fault. I look back on last year and I've reflected on it a lot actually. Watched a lot of the GoPro footage that we had, thought about some of my decisions, thought about the tournaments where it really went wrong. And I'm gonna tell you, I made some bad decisions last year. I wasted a good bit of time in the tournaments, but I don't feel like I made as bad of decisions as my results. I honestly feel like my my second year I made the worst bad the most bad decisions my second year my third year I had the worst results by far but I feel like I didn't make quite as bad of decisions and waste as much time as I actually did the year before but you know the results is all we have to go by in this sport it's results oriented sport and my results last year were extremely bad I do not want to do that ever again for the rest of my life so if there was a positive in this it would be that I already worked pretty hard and it just lit a fire in me to go do as much as I possibly can to never miss another classic. But what we're gonna talk about today is, since I'm not there, I have not been doing much of this right here, which is looking at an avionics app on my phone, trying to figure out exactly where the fishing's going to go down on this lake. You know, usually before a tournament, I spend countless hours on Google Earth, Google Maps, you know, my Humbird app, uh, Navionics app, everything, I throw my graphs, everything. So I always go through a bunch of different types of mapping. I go through the sea map. I go through everything for a lake before I go there. Another thing that I always do is I always map out exactly how many miles it is to landmarks on the lake. So if there's a, a bridge somewhere on the lake, I want to make sure that I know exactly how many miles it is to that bridge just so I can pace kind of how long it's going to take me to get back because I don't want to get back, you know, up there around way in 15 or 20 minutes early a lot of times because that's 15 or 20 minutes of fishing time that you're up there sitting in what may or may not be a very good area to fish on the Lake Fort Loudon or Tennessee River, whatever you want to call it. I wanted to make sure that I was not in that region, you know, in the last couple of miles closest to the lake with very much time left because I felt like it was an unproductive area of the lake. Now, after I went back and watched some of the live footage, I realized they absolutely smashed them close to the ramp. And I didn't find that in practice. I felt like there was two main regions of the lake where you could really catch them. And one of them was seven miles down and one of them was like 30 miles down. Maybe it was 25 miles down, something like that. But there was two main sections to me that felt like they were the most conducive to catching a lot of bass. Now, I never ran way up, I think it was Lake Teleco, the other lake that was, you know, we could run a long ways up it. I never went up that lake very far at all. I went up it a little bit, saw some, you know, fished for some up there, but I felt like it wasn't quite as good as actually Fort Loudon, especially the lower end of Fort Loudon, to me, felt like the best. And you know, it, it definitely was. That's where the last turn was won. It was one on smallmouth. It was one deep. It was one 
moping. I call it the Mickey rigging, but it was one moping and Gussie won it. Hats off to him. He caught him every single day and that's what you have to do in a four day tournament. I think his worst day was 14 pounds and nobody else could compete with that. That's why he won by a very large margin on that lake. I think he won by seven or eight pounds and whenever you have I think he, he had like 64 pounds or something. And whenever you win by seven pounds with 15 a day, you know the lake's fishing a little bit stingy that time of year. But, you know, what I'm looking for in this tournament for people to do well, I think a gamble is going to pay off in this one. You know, this is a tournament where there's less boats. So a lot of times that community hole stuff really, really plays. The problem with Fort Loudon is I feel like there's not that much super obvious community hole stuff where they really, really get. So if this is on a lake like Gunnersville, where there's so much productive water, so many big fish, every single creek, pocket, everything has the potential of having 20 pounds. That's a lake where you're not going to want to gamble. Like, there's so few boats in the actual tournament, you can just run what's known as the best stuff on the lake. A lot of times not have to share it, and, you know, you can stay super productive the entire time. On a lake like Fort Loudon, where it didn't feel to me, and I don't have a lot of experience, I've only fished there one time in my life, but it felt to me like there was a lot of dead water, some super small hot spots, and I didn't feel like it was quite big enough quite enough of that water to really have stuff to yourself. I feel like in this one, a gamble is really gonna pay off. Somebody may run way up the other lake. Somebody may spend a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, a backwater, you know, trying to get over some shallow stuff, pass some stumps, all that type of stuff could play in this one. I'm looking for guys to make long runs and it to pay off in this one. This tournament where there's no points involved, people are not gonna worry about running 80 miles or, you know, most of our boats have a 150 mile range. This is a tournament where somebody might run 70 miles and not even try to get gas and then just try to make it back because there's no points in it. You wanna, you wanna catch as many fish as possible. Now, if I run 70 miles and I catch them early, I'm gonna get gas somewhere on the way back. I don't think a lot of people think like that. Why? I don't think a lot of people think this ain't a points tournament. I think people still try to do well, I think that's you, probably might be a you thing. <laughs> it may be a you thing, but that's what everybody talks about, though. And you hear them talk about the classic. Yeah, but I don't think I, I think in their mind they they think that sounds good, but I don't think they actually execute it well. Maybe not, but I know some people that would. Oh, there's some people. You that got would. you got some John Coxes. Yeah. You got a swindle. You no, know. There's people that would. I'm just saying. Yeah. The you got people like Lee Livesey, which I think made the classic. They just he, don't want to embarrass themselves. He'll, but those three guys I, I just talked about will make those big moves. Like they'll they'll run till they're about out of gas. They'll, they'll run till they got half a tank left, find a good spot, catch them, and try to use every minute they got and think they can make it back. You know, now if they catch them early, obviously you're gonna get gas. But I'm just saying this is a tournament where you can take an un, abnormal amount of risk, and if you don't catch a bass, you get paid. So I think this one's gonna be one of those ones where guys really try to force it. Now for me. Going into this tournament, the thing about this tournament is somebody can catch 22 pounds, 23 pounds. It can happen. It happens over there decently regularly. But that doesn't change the fact that a 12-pound bag is a really good bag. So staying close to that cut line is going to be extremely important. Just make sure that you get into day three because you catch you a 13-pound bag, 13-and-a-half-pound bag, and then you go into day three and you catch 22 or 23 pounds, now you're in contention to win. So it doesn't matter when you have that big bag, you have it on day one and then catch 10 pounds and then 14 pounds, you got a chance to win. If you catch 15, 15 and 17, you got a chance to win. Anything in, in that range gives you a chance to win. But I feel like this tournament right here is gonna be one of those tournaments that's kind of Florida-like. Somebody catches a giant bag one day of the tournament which in Florida, it might be 38 pounds. On this lake, it'll be 23. And then just like do whatever they can to make sure they catch a limit the other two days and have them that 11 to 13 pound range. So, I mean, I do, I feel like this is gonna be a gamble tournament. I think this is gonna be one of those risky tournaments. A lot of drama in this one. I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be close enough going into the final day. So the thing about what Gussie was doing, a four day tournament, 
it's easier to get separation with consistency. You know, like I think Steve Kennedy came in second in the last one and on day three of the tournament, he had like 20 pounds or 21 pounds. Well, on, after, after three days, he, he was right there with Gussie. And I think on the fourth day, maybe he didn't catch him as good. It was something like that. But that 15 pound a day average over four days is a lot harder to do than it is over one day or two day or three days. Three days is still difficult to do, but I just don't feel like that 15 pound a day average is gonna win this one. I think it's gonna take close to 50 pounds, 48, 49 pounds, something like that, like 16 a day, maybe 16 or 17 a day, something in that range I think is gonna win this tournament. But like I said, I think somebody's gonna catch one giant bag. The techniques I would look for in this one is gonna be some shallow cranking, a good bit of it. Boat docks are gonna play really hardcore in this one, I feel like. You know, whenever we were there in, when were we there? We were there in February. It's cold. Cold, I felt like those fish were still in that kind of rock stage. A lot of those fish were in those, so some were, were really heavily on bait, bait fish out of the middle of ditches, stuff like that. A lot of them seemed to be on that rock. I remember in practice, I couldn't hardly get bit at all off of wood, couldn't hardly get bit at all off docks. I got a bite or two here and there off docks. In the tournament, I caught one or two off docks, but it seemed like those fish, they wanted to be on that rock, which is what they want to do in the Tennessee River when it's really, really cold. I think in this one, they're gonna be a slight bit further along. You'll see people catch some big ones, throwing vibrating jigs around docks, swim baits around docks, you know, flipping jigs, flipping creature baits, all that type of stuff underneath docks, even cranking around docks, gonna be a really big player in this one. I feel like that's gonna be one of the things that really does well in this one. Another one's gonna be that moving water on the Tennessee River. If you run way up Tillico, find some moving water that can play anywhere on Fort Loud and there's moving water they can, it, it, they always will be fish. It don't matter if it's the back, a backwater, a bridge, a pinch point, anything like that. And I just feel like it's gonna be dominated with reaction baits primarily. That's where those fish are gonna be, those pre-spawn females. It seems like it's easier to get them to bite something like a reaction bait or a big bait like a jig flipped around some of that shallow cover. So, I mean, what do you think, Hunter? You think it's gonna be a kind of play it safe tournament? do just because they don't want to embarrass themselves at the classic. I'm not saying that they should. I'm just saying I think people do. Yeah. A lot of times. Yep. Yeah. The, the conditions are very similar. Like it was sleeting the other day up yeah. there. It was cold when we were there. Yep. Yeah. It was extremely cold. The conditions are very similar, but one of the things, it's a month, it's a month right. later. I'm a big believer in the length of the day dictating where those fish move to. Like I just, I believe in that wholeheartedly. And I feel like those fish are going to be further along than they were. Even though we got the same conditions, the water will be a decent amount warmer, maybe only four or five degrees warmer, but it'll be a decent amount warmer. And I just feel like those fish are gonna be further along. They're gonna be up there, they're gonna slide up a little bit and you're gonna be able to catch them better than we could. And you know, for me, I was trying to fish somewhere where I could catch largemouth and smallmouth very, very close by. You know, like if I went into a pocket, I was expecting to catch largemouth. I was on the main lake points, main channel swings. I was catch, expecting to catch kind of both. And I was lucky to weigh in a couple of big smallmouth throughout that tournament. We were, we were so excited about those smallmouth. Yeah. But if you compare it to those smallmouth bags that we had at like St. Lawrence, it's completely different, but we were so excited. Oh about yeah, that. it's completely different. But, you know, at St. Lawrence, it took 21 a day to get paid. I know. You it's know, to get crazy paid. How excited we yeah. Can get about, yeah. Like a, a three pounder. Yeah. Like I'll be excited about any three pounder at all in that one. But I had two. I had one real big smallmouth, probably close to four, and then a, probably three. I don't know if I had two or three, but I had a couple big smallmouth during that tournament, and then some solid largemouth. For the most part, the largemouth I found were not that big. You know, I, most of the smallmouth I was weighing in, I really had to measure them. You know, I had a couple that were close to three pounds, but for the most part, it was kind of tough on me. Did that place it gets a decent amount of pressure because of the area it's in, but it doesn't get as much pressure because you've got Watts Bar Lake right below it. You've got some really good lakes close to it that are a little bit better. So it doesn't get a crazy amount of pressure, so but there are people that question. fish it. Like, is pressure different when you're dealing with rivers as opposed to like lakes because it's moving water and the fish are constantly moving? Yeah, I, I feel like uh, pressure moves them more on lakes because they kind of spread out more on lakes. Like if, you, if you're in a river system where there's a lot of current, the fish don't have many options about where they can get. 
they don't really want to just sit out in the middle of the river channel in the current which with live scope we're figuring out they actually do a little bit more than we thought but for the most part they're going to set up in places most of the time the same places where the current is broken at you know like behind, behind rock behind wood all that type of stuff they're going to use those places more often in lakes it seems like those fish have more freedom to move around so if they start getting a lot of pressure you can actually move those fish a lot of times with pressure so i feel like rivers are a little bit more consistent and i grew up fishing a lot of rivers that's why i have fished so many milk runs on all these places i go to i'll see a place in practice and i'll say that looks good like a fish should be there and i'll mark it i may hit it four or five times in the tournament and never get a bite off of it but it looks so good and it takes me three or four minutes to fish and i'm gonna keep hitting it and i'm gonna keep hitting it and i'm gonna keep hitting it and then sometimes I'll have a place like that and I'll hit it on day one and won't catch one. Then I'll hit it on day two in the morning and won't catch one. Then the end of day three, uh, the end of day two, I'll hit it again and I'll catch two off of it. You know, it's just, you got to have that confidence that what you're seeing is that good a lot of times when you're fishing rivers and just keep hitting it because at some point they're going to be there and they're going to be feeding. It, se it seems they like. No they have no choice. They have to get there. But in lakes, it's really more about finding where those fish are that minute. A lot of times you're gonna you're gonna catch one and then you're gonna get more bites very rapidly afterwards then you may have long periods where you don't catch one so that's how it feels to me whenever I'm fishing lakes I'm trying to find a group of fish that are somewhere actively now but that's kind of off topic what's your weight prediction my weight prediction I'm gonna go with I'm gonna say it's gonna take 49 3 what's your win prediction Man, that's tough. I have a look at the list. You can tell me who you thought was going to win it. Yeah. I don't know, though. I feel like Swindle's going to catch him in this one. I feel like he's going to catch him in this one. I feel like it's going to fit his style. He's going to catch him, you know, cranking, jerking, doing a lipless, skipping the jig on her docks. I think, I think he's going to catch him in this one. But it's going to be very difficult to beat live scopers you know you got patrick walters you got gussie who's really good at it i mean i don't know exactly who all made the classic to be honest with you but i know that you've got some guys in this one that are really really good with live scope and if those smallmouth are still able to be found out like that they're going to catch them they're definitely going to catch them so i'm looking for it to be a two-way deal somebody grinding shallow which i think could will probably win big large mouth shallow or somebody out deep consistently catching that 15 to 17 pound range a day and i think it's going to be harder this time to do that than it was last time because the fish are not going to be as grouped up deep but i think it's going to be i think that's what's going to happen i think it's going to be somebody grinding shallow maybe mixing it up both ways if somebody had a place where they could you know ease out to and catch a couple nice ones that'll make it so much easier to fish shallow you know and grind and try to fish for those big large mouths but yeah but it's really hard if you have a spot that's producing <clears> 11 <throat> or 12 pounds it's hard to leave it because somebody else might flip on it it's hard to leave it yep definitely hard to leave it but for me it would just kind of depend on what was there if it was 11 or 12 pounds a lot of times in a tournament like that if i feel like i'm not going to catch anything three pounds i'm just going to catch two and a quarters you know a big one's a two and a half a lot of times, man, I don't even sit there long enough to catch a limit. You know, I'd move out there and I'd catch two or three. You know, like if I catch, if I go out there and I catch three that are two and a quarter, two and a half, you know, I may, if, if, if I'm seeing two and a half, so I may catch four because then if you catch a four or five pounder, you got 14 or 15 pounds. But, you know, if they're, if they're 112s to two and a quarters, I would probably only catch two or three to get the day started, then go grind trying to catch bare ones up shallow or, or on something else. So, this ain't, this ain't a tournament for me where you try to just save face. Like, I wouldn't sit out there all day for five or half of the day trying to grind up to 12 and a half, 13 pounds. You know, like, even though that would keep you close, you're still going to need that big bag at some point. You're going to have to leave that at some point and go try to catch a big one. So, I mean, these pre-spawners, somebody could find them. Somebody could find them up shallow, that 8 to 12 foot range, live scope and catch them on a jerk bait, catch them on, you know, a swim bait, anything like that where they could catch some of those big ones. I'm looking for this one to be interesting. Like, you're going to see some... You, this is going to be a cool tournament because you're going to see guys kind of going through the thought process during the event and not getting many bites, especially not getting many quality bites. You're going to see guys fishing, and they're going to be catching some, but trying to figure out how to catch those bigger ones and where those females are. They're going to be moving around kind of 
you're going to get a good look inside their thought process and how they dissect water and run around and figure out what's going on. And you're going to see some guys really maximize areas. They may find one creek where they feel like there's more better quality fish in this one creek. And they're really going to maximize it. You're going to be able to see that, hey, they caught one 18 foot deep on the side of this point. They caught one way in the very back flipping in a, in a log jam. They caught one under this shallow dock. They caught one cranking, you know, a do nothing clay bank. And then, you know, they got lucky and caught one just winding down the side of a dock or something. And, and they might have a good bag, but they caught them five different ways in one area that they have decided to be the best. So I thought there's going to be some of that going on, but I don't think that's what's going to win. You know, they're going to be able to get in one of these creeks around one of these bridges and catch a good bag for a day. I just don't see it holding up. I think somebody's going to have to run around and really fish this one aggressively and catch them and cover water and fish new water every single day. So I'm looking for this one to be good. I think it's going to be a lot of cranking. You'll see some, you know, some DT6s going on. You'll see some square bills going on. You'll see jerk baits. You'll see probably some of that even deeper crank baits going on. You know, some of that 14 to 16 foot cranking, that kind of stuff. I'm expecting to see a lot of jerking, whole bunch of jerk baits going on. You know, and I'm excited for this one. I think it's going to be interesting. This is going to be one to watch, in my opinion, because they're going to be really going through their thought process on this one. Do you think confidence matters a big percentage in this one? Because you're running new water day two or three, you're close to leading the classic, and then running new water, and that's probably scary for a lot of people. It's scary for everybody. I don't care how how good you are, how long you've been doing it. It's always scary to run new water, you know, like what you've got, you know, like practice is now, the tournament's not for four or five more days. If you got some bites doing what they're doing today, that a lot of times is gonna dry up. You know, a lot of times on a, on, a, on a lake that doesn't have hundreds and hundreds of fish using these staging areas, you might be fishing for schools six or seven on these places that you find even if they're these staging areas where you might pull up and you might catch two in a day or three in a day or you might can catch a limit off of it but there's not hundreds more coming to these places because these lakes just aren't like that these lakes have so much rock and so many creeks and stuff and it didn't seem like there was a overwhelming amount of bass in it so it seemed like these places they're going to find in practice i think they're going to dry up I think they're going to have to move. I think they're going to have to run new water. And, I mean, it's tough. It's, it's hard to have confidence doing that, but all these guys do it all the time. You know, like, these are some of the absolute best of the best of the best, and they're going to be able to stay in front of those fish and move around, and those guys, you know, are going to be able to find it. And it doesn't matter if they're catching them or not. They're going to be running new water, and they're going to put it together. You know, early starts are really good in these kind of tournaments. You get off to, you know, if somebody can go out there and, find something in practice that they can start on and catch some two and a half, three pounders and then go run new water, even if they only catch two or three of them, like I said earlier, and then go run that water and try to get, get in front of these fish. Getting that freedom early to be able to move around and kind of figure it out is gonna be huge in this one. And also the guy who gets his back against the wall early and hasn't had a bite and it's 10 or 11 o'clock and they haven't had a bite, so now they're running and trying all kinds of new stuff those are the kind of guys that can find them too. You know, that's been some of my best tournaments. It's where everything that I find in practice just completely went away. And it's like 11.30 or 12 o'clock and I haven't found anything. Everything that I'm running everywhere I shook them off, I'm not catching them. So I start running all kinds of different stuff and I start moving fast and, you know, trying to pick one off here and there. And then you find something. And as soon as you get one bite, that's all you've got and you've got all the confidence in the world in it and you're going to run that for the rest of the day and a lot of times the rest of the tournament. So early starts are really, really good in this tournament and then not catching anything so you start moving is going to be really, really good in this tournament. The thing that's going to trap you and seems to trap me in these types of tournaments is whenever you're grinding and catching decent ones. You know, so if you're going an hour in between bites and catching two pounders, those are the tournaments where it, it really seems to make me struggle on these tougher events because you're getting enough bites to where you can grind it out but you're not getting the right quality and you're not getting the bites frequently enough to know i mean you feel like you're not going to be able to have a great tournament but you know you can catch them doing one thing that's the ones where it gets time consuming and you start trying to to force it and run it and then you might come in with a good bag but it, you, you just know what you're doing is not enough to win so i feel like this one I've said this a bunch of times, this is going to be an interesting one to watch. Hunter, who do you think is going to win? I don't know. I really honestly don't know who's fishing it. I, I don't know who's fishing it. So. Mm, well, I mean, this you is... You know, who, who, like, from 
the opens as fishermen? Uh, Poche made it through the opens. I Man, I don't know. Mm -mm. I don't really know. I don't, you know, I don't really follow that that much. I should have. I know. Uh, I'm gonna say Gerald. Think is gonna win this one. Yeah. It'd be a cool. One. This one fits his style. Last year, last time we were there, he had a, he he made the cut. He made day three, but he had some good bites. I remember talking to him afterwards. He had some really nice bites. He found something off the wall, like I said, and, and had some really nice bites really quick. And I think he said that he made some mistakes in that one. I can't remember exactly, but he he'd be a cool one to win. He's really good at you know throwing a jig around docks and cranking, shallow cranking, all that type of stuff. He's gonna be he's gonna be one in this one. Hard to. Hard to go against somebody like Polnick though, because he's done good there two or three times. I think every time we've been, well, I've only been once, but the year before that when the Classic was there, I think he might have top tended it. And then also he's been really close to a few Classics, you know, so he could be one to win this one. Home guy, Hometown guys are gonna be good. Lester's gonna be really good in this one. You know, he's a grinder. He catches them really good in the pre-spawn. Brandon Card's from there. He's He can be a grinder. He's a little bit different of a grinder. He's more finessey, but he can maximize an area. If somebody's gonna go in a creek and really maximize it and stay hunkered down in one area for a long time, I really feel like Carb, Carb would be one to do that. Lester could also, but those are just that type of fishermen that will go maximize an area extremely, extremely well, so. Are we gonna be there? We'll be there, we'll be there. So we'll be around all over the place. I'll be posting on Instagram, kind of where we are. Another one that could be cool is Poche made this one, and I think he's gonna be fishing in a small boat, so. He could find one of those backwaters. I don't think he'll find one that'll win, but he could find a couple of different places where he could run throughout the tournament and potentially, you know, do well in this tournament. Now, do I think that'll play? Not really. This does not feel like a tournament where that's going to play. I did that some when I was there the last time, but it definitely could, you know, I, but I just don't feel like it's going to work this time. Not in this tournament with all the fish that live deep, moving shallow this time of year. I just... I don't feel like going super far back in treacherous places is going to be the deal. I think getting back in some backwaters is really going to play. I just don't think trying to take it as far as he will sometimes is going to play in this tournament. So I think long runs, sneaky backwaters where those fish are moving to, it's going to be the deal in this one. What else? That's, all. That's it. We'll see y'all at the Classic.